Underused muscles are the main cause of so many painful conditions. If you don't address the underused muscle, you're not gonna fix the problem for good, surgery or not. In this video, I'm gonna focus on one of the muscles that's behind or in front of so many chronic neck pain and headache conditions. Those muscle groups are the deep cervical neck flexors or the longest colli and the longest capitis. Those muscles attach on the front of your cervical vertebrae and without proper firing patterns, there's gonna be a significant imbalance due to the overuse of the muscles on the back of your neck. The way we wanna train this muscle is to lay on a firm surface. Let's see if you can bring your head down to the surface while keeping your forehead to your chin parallel with the surface. So if you're, have, if you're kind of a, stuck in a forward head position, you're gonna end up looking like this, which is a problem. So we need you to put rolled up towels or sheets under so that you have this position. Once you're in that position, then we're looking for you to just do a simple nodding maneuver to try to bring the back of your head down slightly toward the surface. We do not want you to use these, these superficial, rather neck muscles, these big strap muscles, these sternocleidomastoid muscles in your neck. They don't attach to your neck. They only attach to your collarbone and your sternum and your skull. So they tend to get overused which keeps the muscles deep in the neck from working. So you're gonna to need to feel those muscles when you do this exercise to make sure they're not working. So you feel them and you see, can you nod and keep those totally relaxed, no muscle contraction. And then you try to see if you can build that up for 10 seconds. The baseline test that we do with people to see what their endurance is to start is a craniocervical flexion test. So you do that nod that we just reviewed and then see, maintaining that nod, that distance from your chin to your sternum, lift the head slightly off the table, and you see how long you can hold it. The goal is 30 seconds without losing that chin position, without all kinds of shaking and body movement going on, just a smooth hold. Mark down what your tolerance is, and then you can try to increase that with the course of several weeks of training. Now, when it comes to maintaining the progress that you get from doing the exercises, the posture and the way that you hold your head is critical. So being able to hold the head with a slight downward motion has been shown in studies to increase the activity of these muscles. 20 degrees is the number that's found to be most effective. So we take a look at people's computers when they're coming into therapy, their workstations, and make sure that the monitor is pitched slightly downward so that you have a slight neck flexion. What you want is to have that distance between your chin and your sternum to be at a, about a tennis ball or a rolled up hand towel. And we'll do a lot of training and different exercises with people to build that coordination. Laptops will usually get you set up with the correct pitch. You just need to make sure that you're not slumping here to get into that position because then typically you compensate and do that forward head chin lift maneuver which shuts those muscles off. So upright, mid spine, slight nod, and then you're gonna have maximal activation. Now studies have shown that pressure biofeedback devices make this exercise much more effective for people with neck pain in fact, we use a pressure biofeedback device in all of our centers. It's gonna run you well over $100. So we have a little hack that I'm gonna show you in this video where you're gonna pick up a $25 sphygm manometer. That's just the device you would use for manual blood pressure testing. And if you try to pump it up right out of the box, it's not gonna hold much air because it doesn't have anything to push against. So you can pump, 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 but it's not gonna move, okay? Now what you wanna do to make this effective is you're just going to fold it up and then take some athletic tape and you're gonna tape it around that folded up position to hold it in place at the same size as that other cu pressure cuff. Just do two strips. I got this trick from a New Zealand physiotherapist named Gavin Hamer. This is a nice way to be able to offer our patients a inexpensive home exercise device. So you just place this in the bottom of your neck area there, and then you're going to pump it up until it gets to 20 millimeters of mercury on this cuff. From there, you're just gonna nod slightly and see if you can move that needle 10 millimeters of mercury. It might not seem like a lot, but when you keep those superficial neck muscles relaxed, it can be a little bit challenging. So just using only that gentle nod, you're trying to move that needle 10 millimeters of mercury and seeing if you can then hold it for 10 seconds. And then we want you to work on grading it. So try to bring it up just two millimeters of mercury and hold it for 10 seconds and then four millimeters of mercury, and then six, eight, 10, holding them each for 10 seconds to build that neuromuscular coordination to those muscles. Once you can do 10 seconds, you build up to 15 seconds, 20 seconds, and then all the way up to 30 seconds, 
trying to do this one to two times a day until you're able to effectively do that craniocervical flexion test for 30 seconds without pain or discomfort. Studies have shown that training with this type of pressure biofeedback device is significantly better than training without it when it comes to improving endurance and function in people with neck pain. Whether you have chronic neck pain or you're headed for surgery, be sure you're working this muscle in your recovery programs. Watch another video, help you move your best. Click down here, subscribe to the channel, click over there. You wanna keep improving, gotta keep it moving.